So, you want to know how I made it? Alrighty, so to start off this project, we're milling up some walnut boards for the cabinet shell. I kind of sped through that process because I feel like most people know what it looks like to run a board through a planer. All right, I just got all my pieces cut out for the shell of this cabinet, thanks to my handy dandy little piece of note paper here to keep me organized. But my next step is going to be cutting all these pieces to lengths and then cutting some dados in the sides of the cabinet in order to fit all the shelves together. Here is the layout that we're going with for this cabinet. You can see here I have my three shelves as well as my two sides cut out ready to go. So I'm going to be cutting three dados on each of the two sides to accept those shelves in there. And I have them laid out just like that. But not so fast. Before we get those dados cut out, we're going to cut some dados along the back of the side pieces. And this will fit the back panel of the cabinet later on. And I'm going to be using my crosscut sled in order to slowly cut out all of these dados. Oh, actually, I guess I'm using magic. <laughs> Don't tell anybody that I didn't record that part. Um, I hope my secret is safe with you. Anyways, look at that nice fit, man. That's what I'm talking about. Once we have everything dry fitted, it's almost time to glue up. I just have one more little piece I want to add. And this is to make sure that gap at the top just stays as it is and doesn't move at all. This will also give a little bit of structural support when we go to add the top. So while I'm building this face frame, I wanted to share with you my inspiration for this build because, well, it's probably more interesting than watching me put this together. So let's rewind back to July 2021. I know, so long ago. I made this cutting board called the Kaleidoscope Cutting Board, which I thought turned out really awesome, but I got inspiration from Chop Wood Shop on Instagram. Definitely check him out. He makes some awesome pieces. But after I made that cutting board, I knew I wanted to turn it into some type of furniture. <laughs> it just took me eight months to figure out what type of furniture I wanted that to be. I originally wanted to do a nightstand or end table with that cutting board butcher block style as the top with that kaleidoscope design, but I decided I didn't want to do that and instead I wanted to do a cabinet with the kaleidoscope on the door. And that leads me to where I am today working on this cabinet build. Well, look at that. We're just about done with the face frame and we're just getting these glued on and using every clamp I can find to make sure I can get equal pressure along the whole face. All right, so this is where the fun begins. So it's finally time to start on the door or the kaleidoscope part of this project. And I'm sure this is the part you've all been waiting for because it's definitely the part I've been waiting for. 
So as I previously mentioned, I did a cutting board with this Kaleidoscope design and I used four species for that board. But for this project, I decided to go big or go home. So after shuffling through my scrap wall, I came up with around 10 different species of wood. Let's see if I can name them all off the top of my head. Okay, hold on. So we have walnut, cherry, poplar, red oak, hard maple, red mahogany, and cedar. And I actually decided to splurge a little bit and try some exotic woods to give this piece even more color. And yes, I definitely overpaid for them, but like I said, I'm going big on this project. For those three woods, I went with Purple Hearts, Paduk, and Osage Orange. Also, I was thinking, since this project has 10 species in it, I thought a sick name would be Project X. So I'm either gonna call it, uh, I don't know, the Kaleidoscope Cabinet or Project X. Either one, I think it's a pretty cool name. Anyways, now, let's go. So, once I have all my species of wood milled up, I'm going to be resawing them on the table saw to try to get as much out of each board as I can. Also, cutting the boards into more strips gives you more freedom to just go crazy with the colors and mix and match as much as you can. If that makes any sense, of course. <laughs> now I'm just mixing and matching and just switching out as many pieces as I can to get this as jumbled up as I can. And I'm going for a little bit of a gradient design, kind of from the lighter woods to the darker woods. Once I have a decent pattern that I like, I'm going to get this panel glued up. And I'm going to try to not show many glue ups during this process because there is a lot of them for this panel because I know they're boring because literally it's just slapping glue on some wood and pressing it together. So I'll try my best to limit that. So I'm going to let this panel dry overnight and the next day I'm going to come back and plane off just a little bit on each side so I have a flat surface to work with. Since my panel is 10 inches wide, I'm going to cut this down into five strips, trying to get them as equal as possible, which is roughly a little under two inches wide for each of them. Once we have all our strips cut out, we're gonna lay them out, turn them 90 degrees, and then we're going to resaw them down again in the middle, just where my pencil marks are. Wow, I am so good at transitions. I bet you couldn't even tell that that even happened. Now we're just going to be mixing and matching again, and I hope I'm doing a good job at explaining this so far because I honestly think it's kind of hard to explain, but it's really not that hard to do because you really can't mess this pattern up. That's the awesome thing about it. You can do any color combination, any wood species combo, and you'll probably get something pretty cool as long as you somewhat follow the steps that I'm doing. So after finally cutting some ziggy zaggies on the table saw, this is what I'm left with. And I decided to spice up my design a little bit with some leftover pieces I had lying around. And again, you really can't mess this up. I just really slid them in where I saw it looked the best. Now it is important though to cut all these pieces down to the same exact height as all the other pieces because it will make glue up 10 times easier. Trust me. I found this out the hard way. And here is my death contraption I rigged together in order to get this thing glued up nice and tight and not have any gaps or seams in there. You can see I used some calls and everything is nice and flat. And hey, after like 90,000 glue ups and like 13,000 cuts on the table saw, this is what we're left with, a big block of different colored wood. All right, so it's time to finally make this thing into a veneer. So I got this board loaded up on my crosscut sled and I have my stop lock here set up maybe like a quarter of an inch past the blade mark here. So what I'm going to do is slide this up against it here and cut these into a lot of end grain veneer strips. So let's go ahead. I've never done this before, so we're gonna be learning together here. So let's go ahead and try it out and see what we can come up with.
and for the big reveal and boom look at that i think that looks sweet so that will be the front panel for my cabinet and now i'm just sanding all the edges here to get rid of all the burrs or all the little chip outs as best as i can and i've thought the sanding on this piece of sandpaper made a really cool pattern i mean i honestly think someone like could sell this for art or something like there you go there's your next million dollar idea make sandpaper art i don't know so now i'm just taping all these pieces together in order to create somewhat of a veneer i guess and i'm gluing this onto this walnut panel and yes i can already hear the comments coming in oh my gosh you're gluing end grain to face grain well guess what haters yep i sure am Honestly, this project is just really an experiment and I'm excited to see how this door panel will hold up with wood movement and anything like that because I'm sure that could be something concerning. But like I said, we'll see. Once that panel is all nice and sanded and cleaned up and square, it's time to make our door frame. And sadly, I am definitely no cabinet maker, door maker expert, but you can see I made my tenons here in order to fit in that groove for the frame of the door. And since my panel is not going to fit in that groove, I'm using a dome bit here, which I've literally never used in my life. But anyways, it's going to cut a little recess down in order to allow that groove to accept this panel. Are you tired of gluing up? Well, I definitely am. <laughs> anyways, for my hinges, I have these half overlay hinges, which makes me have to route a rabbit the whole way around the door in order to accept the hinge. This just gives the door a thinner appearance and I just think it looks better. So I'm going to do what I think looks best, duh. Hey, look at that, we got a door and it looks pretty good. Next, I'm going to do my best shot at making some molding for this piece. And I have some eight quarter walnut here that I'm going to be using for this, but I'm cutting a 45 degree angle on here, but I'm not finishing the cut just because I didn't want to run into the blade or anything. Wow, okay, I was just rudely interrupted. Anyways, I was going to finish the cut on the miter saw, but since I dropped the piece, it finish the cut for itself, I guess. <laughs> Since I still had a bunch left of that kaleidoscope blank, I wanted my molding to match the door panel. So I cut a groove in the molding that would allow those pieces of veneer to fit right in the molding. Even after cutting out these little pieces, I still have a lot of this blank left. So I'm curious to know what kind of ideas you guys would have maybe that I could do with the rest of this blank. Like I said earlier, I thought maybe a guitar or something in the minds of that would be really cool. But I'm curious to know what type of project ideas you guys could come up with. So if you have anything cool, leave it down in the comments. I went to glue the kaleidoscope pieces onto the molding and for some reason, I don't know why, obviously I wasn't using my brain, I thought tape would be enough clamping pressure and I quickly realized it definitely was not and you can see the gaps in between each pieces here. So I peeled it off before it was dry and cleaned up all the glue off of these pieces and I had an idea to fix this. Basically, I cut this backside corner off, which I was going to do later in the process, but this allowed me to get some clamps on there and get ample clamping pressure. Honestly, I should have just thought of this in the first place. It would have saved me a heck of a lot of time, but that's woodworking, that's how it works. This molding piece really gave me some issues, and I was at that point in the project where I was just like, come on, just please work for me, just stop. But it didn't. I ended up making the wrong cut, so I actually had to remake this whole piece again. You can see I cut a singular 45 degree when I should have cut a compound 45 degree just like this cut here. At this point, I was just extremely mad and just really wanted to throw something. All right, now that I got that off my chest, we can go ahead and attach this top piece so we can align the molding right. And don't tell anybody, but I am using brad nails to attach this. 
and apparently you're not supposed to because it's not professional, but it's a good thing I'm not a professional, so I guess it just worked out. All right, I laid the cabinet down on its back so I can have gravity work with us instead of against us. I'm using that scrap piece of 45 degree angled wood as a clamping mechanism so I can clamp this sucker down. A quick little tip here is to get a good old fashioned bendy straw and take care of all of that glue squeeze out. And then when you're done with it, don't forget to not throw it in the ocean because save the turtles, right? <laughs> with the trim attached and that being said, that's pretty much all we have to do here. Well, except one kind of important part. For the back panel, I wanted it to look like there were a bunch of separate boards glued together. So guess what? I glued a bunch of separate boards together. But before I glued them together, I put a little chamfer on each edge to give them a separate appearance, as you can see kind of here. As I get the back ready to install, I wanted to say that this is a longer form of content that I usually make. And I honestly applaud you for staying this long. It seems like a bunch of people in my generation have really short attention spans these days. So to stay this long, I'm honestly impressed. Ooh, like a glove. So before I get this back installed, I'm going to sand it because trust me, once I get it installed, it would be like nearly impossible to try to get my sander between the shelves and everything. So I'm just saving myself some extra time. So I'm just applying a real thin bead of glue here and then I can't be the only one that thinks applying brad nails is satisfying. So you've probably been thinking, Shane, how the heck are we going to open this cabinet? Freaking magic? Well, maybe if you're a wizard. For all my non-wizards out there though, I'm shaping up this little scrap piece of wana into a handle. I wanted something that was a little more unique than just a simple doorknob, but I wanted it to also try to blend in to not take away from the door front as well. Once I have the shape that I like, I'm just gonna lather some glue on the back and honestly just clamp it on because I think that'll be plenty enough clamping pressure in order for it to stay. And with all the pieces and parts put together, you guys know what time it is. And while you guys watch this sick sanding montage, I guess this is the time I'm supposed to ask you like to subscribe or like the video or something. So if you want to do that, go ahead. This would be a good time to do it. Thanks. Now I'm sanding at 30 times speed here. If only I could stand that quick in real life. Once I'm done sanding though, I'm going to apply some mineral spirits and I think it only works good if you slam it that hard on the table. But this just helps clean up all the loose dust particles and gives me a good idea if I missed any glue spots. Once we let those mineral spirits dry for a couple hours, we can apply everyone's favorite finish, Rubio Monocoat. And I'm not gonna lie, this was a little difficult considering all the little cracks and crevices in this project because you really have to make sure once you apply it, you wipe everything off. Finally, I could start to see all these colors come to life and man, all my hard work was finally paying off. Then all that's left to do is attach the door, take a couple pictures, and that's pretty much it. Finally, it's done. Woo! All right, that is the end of the video. Hope you all enjoyed. Like, subscribe, and comment something funny. Peace.